Now, once you understand how we can create your own API endpoints to access the backend data, let me show you how you can fetch this data and display them in the front end. You can see we have different endpoints here inside this API folder. Let's access this post endpoint and access all the posts and display inside this second section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the second section. And as you know, inside this section, we have different posts. I'm going to access this post endpoint and display all these posts using an array of object. So I'm going to iterate over an array of object and display all these posts. So let's see how to do it. I'm going to fetch this first and display inside this second section. So if you're back to the website, then you can notice when you scroll down, your second section, something look like this. You have the latest post and you have the same post images right here inside this second section. So what we need to do is we need to fetch this data. So what we need to do is we need to call the fetch function. So instead of creating a new function inside this file, I'm going to create a new folder here inside this project and I'm going to name this folder library or you can say lib. And inside this, I'm going to create a file and name this file helper.js. That's upon you. You can specify any name to this file. What I want, I want to get the data from the post endpoint. So here I'm going to first say API post. So I'm going to just display here endpoint. So let me just add here endpoint like this. And then I'm going to say here export default async function get post. And inside this function, I'm going to say constant response is equal to await and call here fetch function. The fetch function is the JavaScript function, which is going to return a promise as a response. Inside this fetch function, you specify your URL endpoint. The URL endpoint is API forward slash post. But what you have to do is you also have to specify port name and the local host. You have to specify the complete path of your endpoint. So if you just back to your project, then if I specify here API post, when I press enter, then this is going to return all the data. So you have to just copy this URL and then specify that URL right here. So this is the actual endpoint of this get post function. So inside this fetch, you have to specify this endpoint, something like this. Or at the top, right up here, you can create here a constant variable base URL and then you can specify your endpoint here. And then you can specify this base URL right inside this fetch function base URL. And now if you want to customize this function a little bit more, then you can get it of this endpoint right from here. Just pass the base URL here. And after that, you pass your endpoint or you create a parameter to this function, which is going to be the params. And then you pass your params here. So when the user call this get post, he need to specify the endpoint. I'm not using this. I'm just going to specify the base URL here, something like this. Just after that, once you have your response, so from this promise, you have to get your data and you need your data in the JSON format. So I'm going to say here constant post is equal to await response dot JSON. So this JSON function is going to return the data in the JSON format to this post variable. After that, here, I'm going to say return post. That's it. So I'm just going to make a get request to this endpoint and get the data inside this variable in JSON format and return that using this function. So now if I access this function in the second section right here, then I can get all the data of this endpoint. Let me show you. Let me save this back to the section two at the top here. Let me first import get post and I can just copy this. And if I just say here console.log get post, when I save the changes back to my project, and when I open the console, when I reload it, you can see I'm going to have here a promise. And this promise is fulfilled. It means you have an array inside this promise. You can notice you have your data here. To get this data, you have to just call then function. So just call get post dot then. And here you can specify console.log response. Save the changes. When I reload the browser, you can see you're going to have your data. So as you know, you're going to get this data from the backend. So this statement is going to return all the posts as a response inside the console. 
if you back to this function, then you can notice we just return all the post as a response. What if I want only one post as a response from this function? You can do that as well. You can specify here a parameter called id and then right inside this, here you can say if we have id, then execute this if statement and then return post dot find then call value here iterate over an object and then specify here value dot id if it is equal to this id then return that id as a response let me save the changes back to the section 2 and if i specify here 2 back to my project and reload it you can see i'm going to get the object or you can say i'm going to get the post of the second id if i change this to 4 here i'm going to have the post with the id 4 so you can easily get the individual post using this technique. In the next year's course, we understand how we can use the SWR library. Let's take a look at how we can use that library in the real world examples.